Hello and welcome to my channel. If you subscribe to my channel, you probably saw this robot shoulder. This is the axis number one, axis number two and axis number three for our future robot arm. I'm still finishing the axis number four and five and the video about this axis is coming quite soon. But meanwhile, I built another robot shoulder. And for this second robot shoulder, I used these quasi direct drive actuators. I already made a video about these actuators some time ago. I really loved them and so I decided to make a robot shoulder out of them. Let me show you what I've built. And this is our second robot shoulder. It's a little bit more bulky, but uh, it works. It uses the same main principle as the previous robot shoulder, meaning that it uses the differential transmission. And here I have bevel gear over here and two bevel gears here. Let me show you this in Fusion 360. And here is the Fusion 360 files for this uh, robot shoulder. I have actually two files, one file for the axis number one and the second file for the axis number two and three. So this is the axis number one and I already made a video about this axis some time ago. Since this video I made some minor changes like for example I added this plate to fix this axis. And also I changed the output pulley in order to be able to connect the axis number two and three. On the robot this axis should be fixed like this upside down. And let me show you what is inside. And inside we have uh, two pulleys, the small one and the big one. The belt is going around these two pulleys and this is the idler to tension the belt. And the small pulley is connected to our quasi direct drive actuator. So this is very simple and straightforward. As usual, these gray flat parts, they will be made from carbon fiber at final design. And probably also this support I will make from carbon fiber or from aluminum or aluminum, whatever you prefer. So now let's look at the axis two and three. First of all, these parts goes to the axis one. So this is connected to the output of the axis one. And I draw only half of this assembly. The other half is exactly the same as this half, but just mirrored. So this is simple. The first thing which we can see is this huge bevel gear. This is a bevel gear for the differential. And another bevel gear is hiding by this cover. Let's also hide this part. And like this, we can clearly see two bevel gears. And this second bevel gear is connected to the pulley. Let's look at this pulley closely. So for this we need to hide this piece and also this one. And so this big pulley is connected with the belt to the small pulley and this small pulley is connected to our quasi direct drive actuator. And again we have an idler to tension the belt. This idler is connected to this axis which is connected to this piece. So by rotating this piece we can tension the belt. And again here all the gray flat parts will be made from the carbon fiber at the final design. For the moment they just 3D printed. So as you can see the cut design is quite simple and straightforward. There is no surprises here. I also would like to show you the electronics to control this shoulder. So this is the electronics. Here we have four joysticks. Each joystick has two degrees of freedom. This is an Arduino with Wi-Fi and on top of this Arduino there is this CAN bus module. This is emergency button just to stop the robot revolution. This is a small power supply to power up Arduino. And this is two big power supplies for the actuators. And only one of these two power supplies is connected. This is the two electronics side by side. This is for the quasi direct drive actuator shoulder and this is for the O drive based shoulder. This one has an Arduino with the CAN shield and this one has the Tinzi. Here I have two huge power supplies, but only one of these power supplies is connected. And here I have the single power supply. It's a 400 watts power supply. And here each power supply is producing 500 watts. Theoretically, this shoulder with this MIT like uh, Cheetah actuators is going to consume more power. So that's why I have these two power supplies, but we will see. Now let's run this robot shoulder. Now we can switch on the power. It went to the home position. The home position is a little bit weird. I need to adjust this. So this is the joysticks. I don't see them, but I think it's gonna be okay. So this is the axis number one. There is a time lag between the joystick 
and uh, shoulder, but this is because the program on the Arduino is not optimized yet. I need to take care of this. So this is the second axis. And here the third axis. It's actually quite silent, but from time to time you can hear this noise. You see? This is not because of the actuators, this is because my program at the Arduino. Because I move at the small steps and when there is this noise, it means that it goes step, 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 step. At higher speed, there is no this problem because it does not stop between the steps. But at the lower speed, I just make these steps not very fast and like this, it has the time to stop between the steps. But it works nice and I can move the axis number three and axis number one at the same time and do this. Not this, but this. You see? I don't yet installed any limitation for the motion. So for the moment it can rotate uh, many, many turns, but it will break at some point wires. That's why when I control this shoulder, I should pay a lot of attention in order not to break something. So this axis, axis number three, there is no problem. I can rotate it many turns. But for example, the axis number two, I can easily crush it against the body of the shoulder. Just for fun, this is a wrong pieces, which I 3D printed, but they were wrong. They were either the wrong holes or wrong design, etc. So this is not the 3D printer fail. This is my design fail. So don't forget to put the like for this. Let's look a little bit closely on this shoulder. So this is the two actuators. The third one is over here. This one is for the axis number one here. And this is for the axis two and three. Here, this is the axis of the idler. And uh, by rotating this axis, we can tension the belt. So for this, we need to lose these three screws, rotate it to tension the belt and afterwards tighten these screws back. Also, what I like is that there is access to this part of the actuator. So like this, you can change ID of the actuator. And also you have access to the connector, which is down there. Another thing which I wanted to point it out is that here we use a very wide and very strong belts. This is because these belts are connected to the output of the actuator and there is like a really high load on these belts. So I have to use these huge belts. Also here it was quite easy to design these covers. And like this I covered the bevel gears so there is less points where you can pinch your fingers. Here I have two robot shoulders side by side for the comparison. First of all, they are more or less the same size, but this one is a little bit bigger and a little bit bulky. But for me, it's difficult to say which one is uh, more solid. I suppose that this one probably a little bit more solid, but it's still questionable. Also, I think this one probably a little bit more powerful, but it's also questionable, so we need to test it. So here the design is based on the quasi direct drive actuators. And here the design is based on these huge motors and on O-Drive controller. So inside of this actuator there is a planetary gearbox and afterwards I have the belt transmission which transmits the power from the actuator to the bevel gear. And here I have first the belt transmission and afterwards planetary gearbox over here which transmits the power to the bevel gear. And that's why here I can use quite small belt compared to here because here I don't have much force on this belt. This shoulder is a little bit easier and that's why it was quite easy to design the covers to cover the bevel gears. And like this, there is less pinch points where you can pinch your fingers. But on this one, it's like quite dangerous. You should pay attention and you should not hug it when it works. I don't have enough space left on my table. So that's why I put electronics on the chairs behind the table. You should understand that uh, when I'm going to run it, it's not going to be comparison because they use different way of control. And that's why I have the different acceleration and different speed in this program. And so uh, I cannot really compare them like this. But let's do this anyway. So first of all, this shoulder. Calibration procedure. 
and other axis calibration. And now it's ready to run. Now I will switch on this one. Let's check the axis number one. Now another axis, uh, axis number three. This one is way faster, but it's not because it's faster by itself. It's because I have different program on the TNZ for this one and on the Arduino for this one. Axis number two and axis number two here. Yeah, I can't control them both at the same time. This is cool, I can play with this like all day. So I need to work on the program for this one because uh, this one is really fast, really agile, uh, really nice. And this one is a little bit slow. I need to accelerate it. But this is going to be for the future video. As you saw, both shoulders works really well. And both of these shoulders use quasi direct drive technology. Here we kind of built our own planetary gearbox. And here we use the MIT mini Cheetah like actuator which consists of the planetary gearbox, motor and controller in one compact form factor. In my next video I will continue with the build of this robot arm and maybe one day we will build a robot arm out of these actuators too. Why not? To accelerate this you can support me by putting the like to this video, putting one or several comments or by supporting me via PayPal or Patreon. All the links in the description to this video. And by the way, here are the names of the people who supported me on Patreon. This support makes really a huge difference for me. The more support I will have, the faster all this will grow and the quicker I will finish the robot arm. Stay safe, good luck with your projects and see you next time.